another vlog. We're back to weekly vlogs now. <coughs> and this week we are reading Spiffbo books. I'm so excited to start my Spiffbo 8 journey. I've been following Spiffbo since it started. Was it me? And I've seen the rounds as they've been going. I've not read any of the other books up until now because I left myself with too much of a big TBR last year, last year as you know. My TBRs are crazy. But I made space for these final 10 Spiffbo books and this is the first vlog where I'll be reading three of the finalists. The way that it's going to be is I'm going to read three this month, three next month and probably four in the last month. That's how it's gonna go. I'm reading the finalists. And this, this, this is under the dust jacket. This is actually what the um, cover looks like as well, but this is cool. Um, so the first one on the radar to read, I say radar, I've started this. Um, and I am 270 pages in. I am two hours from finishing this. And it is A Touch of Light by Tiago Dalla. This has been on my radar since it came out. And Again, I kept pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it back. But then I want a giveaway for this. So I didn't have to buy it myself. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And my battery's going to die, so I'll be back. If in a different situation, I'm sorry. But, yes. First one I picked up was the audiobook. I have been devouring this. So this follows three different POVs. Adrian, Nasha and Lynn. I didn't... I read the synopsis when I originally saw this book, but I haven't read it again since because I wanted to go into this with fresh eyes, if that makes any sense. That doesn't make sense. But we've got Adrian, who is a prince of a domain nation, and he lost someone he loved, but because of who she was, his grief is, like, forbidden. I will mention this if I think it's relevant in books, but this does have a religious element it's not like ilbon level religion but there are very pious people in here take of that what you will but it doesn't overtake the story it's just a part of it if that makes any sense then we have elaine who is a warrior who's been running from her past that's all you get to know um but something's coming which means that she may no longer no may no longer be able to run she has to fight and then we've got Nasha who has something that she believes is a curse inside her, but she has some kind of power inside her. Um, we're made to believe it's bad. That's all I'm going to say. But she is an outcast. They are all outcasts in my eyes from reading this. Um, for, for various different reasons, they're treated differently. And it's just... It's a very interesting story. It's a very gripping story. And <laughs> there was a physical reaction to something that happened in one of the chapters that I was on live with Becca. And I literally just, I did not expect that to be said. And I was just like, well, okay, we're doing that then. But I'm not sure if I agree with some of the actions that are taken by Adrian specifically. Um, I can understand his motivations for behind what he wants to do. So one of the taglines is how far will you go to resurrect someone you love. I think it's something along the lines. So you can kind of gather what he is he's trying to do. Like it's and it's that's not a spoiler, it's literally on the synopsis. So yeah, this is my book one and I should finish this today and we are only on Monday and this will be my first read of 2023. I can't believe I'm saying this. 2023. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a madness. So I think this week I'm gonna specifically keep this vlog to a spiffle vlog because two of the books are audiobooks but one is a physical read. And we all know how I get on with physical reads. So I'm not going to give myself too much. The theme of 2023 is do not give yourself too much to do, Lisa. Okay? Fine, fabulous, funky, fresh. 
and then because next week we have some buddy reads going on and i say some i can't remember if it's just the one <laughs> but we start um never night and i'm hoping that my physical copy of never night arrives by then because i've got the us edition with the pretty cover i'll see if i find it i will put it up here Hopefully at some point in this vlogarino it will arrive in El Postito and I can show the what I'm referring to physically in the flesh, in the papery flesh, whatever it is. But this month I am partaking in Dos Ridathonos. I don't know why I'm saying words in a manner that they are not supposed to be said. But we are here, we deal with it. So the first one is a key mark readathon. It's a month long readathon, I think question mark is it month long i think editing lisa here so ignore you know, i don't know what this fringe is doing i haven't decided what, what this is doing yet but um i started the key readathon early it started on the 6th of january so anytime i mention the key mark readathon you can disregard it don't know how much I'm going to edit out of this vlog because it won't make sense if I edit too much out about the readathon. But just bear in mind, these two books that I read cannot count because um, I advertised on the Twitter that I was reading them before the readathon started. And I thought it was the beginning of January and it's running from the 6th of January to the 6th of Feb. So I've got to take part. Kim Mark Discord will be linked down below. It's an indie, like majority indie um, discussions go on there, but yeah, uh, I'm an idiot, clearly. There's a maximum of five prompts. They give you an option of nine. And Kim Mark is, it used to be, what did it used to be? The, oh, what did it used to be called? It used to be called the o Oasis. What is it? It's gone out of my brain. If I remember what it used to be called, it was something Oasis that used to be called. It used to be run by Bookish Benny. But it's changed hands and the Discord has changed slightly. But there is a readathon going on in there and a lot of the books, if not most of the books, most of the books that are discussed in there are indie books. Surprise! And a lot of the indie authors that I'm interested in reading from are also in that Discord. The person who runs the Discord is A.R. Witham, who... <laughs> um, surprise, surprise, I just got his book. One of his books. And this is The Legend of Blackjack, which I won't be reading this month, but I will be reading it at some point. This has been on my radar for ages. It feels like for ages. So many people have said so many good things about this. It's only 440 pages, so it's not going to take that one to read anyway. And it has a matte velvet cover, which y'all know I j'adore, j'adore. Key Black Readathon is out of the nine prompts, you could pick a maximum of five. These are books I was already reading anyway, the same way, the same as it is for the British, the Great British TBR off. I keep wanting to say Great British Bake Off. We are off okay so the prompts i will put the little thingy here what's it called image i will show you what it looks like it's cute and it has a little lizard like on top of the bonus point bit which i just think is super cute um i don't know why i think that is so adorable but it's just, it's just a cute little gecko thing anyway so out of these nine prompts i've chosen I've chosen prompt number one, which is weapon on the cover, which is this. So this is weapons on the cover, and I'm only using one prompt for this. You get a point if you read the book, a point if, extra point if you fill one of the bonus prompts, and then you get an additional point if you review the book on either Goodreads or Amazon or your blog or wherever, and send your team captain the link to that um, review. So I will be reading this and reviewing this on Goodreads and Amazon. And I will probably do an individual bookish review on my channel at some point as well. So yeah, there's this. And then book number two for this readathon. I've chosen The Exile by Ryan Kyle. I need to read this ASAP Rocky because the 19th of January is a war and ruin. 
and it's very late for the axe to go out because he's had to do a lot of um changes to the book and his copy editors and things are still going through everything at the moment because of the length of the book it is it it's like <sighs> Brandon Sanderson size it's it's a, a lot I think it was like 430,000 words I think it comes out am I lying that might be wrong I might have made that number up but it's a lot of words so yeah I want to read this which is a novel that comes before that before that before before that for it so this obviously you can see there what i'm using it for this covers indie author so i should get three points for this book because i will be reading it and reviewing it and it covers a bonus point as well whoop, whoop. and then we have conjuring of light which was for the actual prompt it is continuous series and then the bonus prompts is a book over 500 pages this actually is I think the only book over 500 pages I'm reading this month who am I who is she we know not I'm confused but also not mad and then we have cruel gods which is a new to you author which is prompt number seven seven is prompt number seven and then finally we have Tethered Spirits, which covers prompt number five, which is a book published in the last year. So those are my prompts for Key Mark Readathon. And then doo -doo, for the greatish for the Great British no. Oh my god, I said it wrong. The Great Bookish TBR off. The Exile Count for Prompts two and eight, which I've numbered, the, the prompts aren't numbered, they just, um, which is read from your favourite genre and read a short book that's less than 300 pages. And then A Conjuring of Light is going for continuous series. And then I will go through the rest after that. The other books I'm reading this week are not going to count for anything else on the TBR, TBR off, unless I can get around to Ilborn, which is only 200 pages. And I'm really, really trying to finish that. Th that's what I've got so far. I'm going to head off now um, and join my loose and the gang for the last chatty sprint bit. No, the last chatty bit after the sprints because um, we've just come back from the last sprint when my loose is doing her first set of weekly sprints. So I've been on supporting. Um, and then once everyone's off, I'll be getting back to this. Welcome and wish me luck. Hi! Hi! It is just past midnight while well, I'm lying. Um, it's, it's one o'clock in the morning. I, um, I may have stayed up and got all, like lost in the reading. Maybe! This would five stars five stars five stars just i don't know how to, I, I, I don't there's this and then there's oh god the way that this ended sir walk walk if you're gonna break me like this give me some warning just to, just just me just the just the things are just a change of it because um I was not prepared for the roller coaster of emotions that um that I went through for this whole thing. Okay, so I, I should I should have expected the emotion from an indie book, given the fact that the vibes were very similar. Um to what I usually read in this genre. Specifically the sort of high fantasy adult stuff. Um, but it was crazy. I, th I think all the characters were supposed to be um, real people. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's becoming more of a thing now, I feel, that authors are realising that back in the days when they used to, back in the days, when they used to put 
characters as like the hero of the book that was not flawed and all that kind of thing and just like the dream book kind of character that even initially came through as like a not such a likeable person turned out to be misunderstood and was actually a golden boy. I'm not saying that's purely happened in just older fantasy books but it happens a lot and it happens a lot in contemporary which to be honest I don't mind reading at times but when it comes to sort of these types of fantasy books I like reading about characters that have flaws that even though they are the main character in the book they're not necessarily 100% a good person or they don't always make the right decisions and there's consequences to the actions that people take and there's none of this uh, like convenient plot thing going on <laughs> which this very much was not convenient <laughs> Not for my brain, not for my heart, not for my tear ducts. Just absolute fuckery. <laughs> but it was so good. And if you like high fantasy, if you like flawed characters, this is three POVs. And I can honestly say not one of them is 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 like the perfect golden person. Um, and I love that they all make decisions that have consequences <laughs> that's all i can say and then and then i was like oh i've i finished that very quickly i'm gonna just move on to this and read a couple of chapters like i said we're now on after 1am and i am on chapter 7 already and this is so good so good we're following two povs um kale she's great and um quinn quentin so kale is a vespa and she has indigo skin and she lives in the undercity and she's very much the poor 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 faction of people and in this world there are different types of people if i if i could find the website that trudy has um they, oh sorry i won this in a competition by the way when i entered this competition the um one of the the the, the, the question was what faction would you be a part of like what race would you be a part of and there was a, i don't know if it's still there but there was a website link we went to the page and you could see all the different like races and there's just they're all great there's the div the diviners are these people that have the power to like read them like so the diviners can generally read your past but then when they touch you they can read what you've done i don't know how far it goes back they said that usually when they test people it goes back about an hour and a half an hour and I think it's sounds like to catch people out when they do wrong. And then there's these wardens that are basically, from by the sound of it, like police. And the diviners t seem like they are like the upper, upper class of people. And then you've got the glimmer, who don't seem like a great race of people. And then you've got the umber, I think they're called. What her friend Drew is an umber. There's, there's there's lots of there's lots of factions that races whatever you want to call them, and I don't I don't know how to describe it, but I'm guessing these two people on the front, that is Kale and that is Quinn or Quentin, whatever you want to call him, and basically, is this on the back? Okay, so something happens, and Kale realizes that maybe she's not just a normal Vesper maybe there's something else going on that she doesn't really know, understand and Kale is part of a group of people that are trying to stop Glimmer taking over and like enslaving other races in workhouses and um, a lot of them are Vespa 
and Vespera, by the sound of it, Vespera seemed to be the lowest of the races out of all of them and seemed to be treated the worst. So Vesper, by the sound of it that I'm getting so far, that like Shadow is their is their power. Um and like cause Kale can hide herself. But she can't hide herself from diviners. There's something about a diviner that means that she can't hide herself from them. Yeah, there's a situation that happens, something goes down, and now people are looking for Kale. And, and, and coming off the back of what happened with A Touch of Light, I don't want to get too attached to characters. I'm nervous, I'm scared, because I can't trust people. Because even in YA, when it comes to indie authors, I don't trust you, okay? Ella McRae, I'm thinking of you. <laughs> and Maroda, you know what I mean. <laughs> So, I think this is why it, anyway, there's a swearing in it, there's quite a bit of swearing in it, but I don't, I don't know if this is why it, actually, thinking of it. It's really annoying because the new setup on Goodreads is not giving me the option to see what this is shelved under. It's down like fantasy, epic fantasy. It's annoying me because I don't know. A lot of swearing in, well I'll say there's a lot, there's quite a bit of swearing in there, but the swearing in my ear, so I don't know. What I do know is currently, I am this far into it and I'm really enjoying it. So let's just see how it goes. This is like a 500 page book. She a chonker, she a chonky motherfucker. But yeah, I'm gonna go to bed now because I have work in the morning. But you bet your bottom dollar that I'll be listening to this on my way to work in the morning. And hopefully when I will look a bit better than I do now. <laughs> Peace. Hello. I'm just popping in. Um, it's now 1am on Wednesday morning and at some point my sleeping pattern will go back to normal. When that will be, I've got no idea. But I am now like 200, just over 200 pages into Cruel Gods and things are getting really good. So this character here is Kale. And this one, I'm guessing this one is Quen. His name is Quentin. I did stumble on my way just today, but he prefers to be called Quen. And he is a diviner. She is what we think is a Vesper. But this is not a spoiler because it is on the back. Um she has powers that she was were unbeknownst to herself. Um, there's a character in here that we now know is called Jinx and I just I just think it's just so good. The one thing that I'm finding with this I don't know why I'm hugging it. Why am I why am I hugging it like this? The one thing I am finding with this book in particular is um I am not sure about the audiobook. The narrator is great, he does some voice as well. So there's um I can't remember there's different, like, I'm going to call them races. Um, there's different beings in this book. And when you come across different characters, um, he he can do the different voices really well so you can tell it's a different character. However, the difference between Kale's voice and Quen's voice is very, very minor that sometimes, and because it's told in first person, it's very difficult to determine the difference between when we're following Kale as the POV and when we're following Quen until the other person is mentioned or something is said that makes you think, oh, this is Quen and, do you know what I mean? So there is, there is that. There is probably, there, there is a slight difference in the voice but it's not noticeable enough for me to click on as soon as the chapter changes because it doesn't always switch from one chapter following Kale, the other one following Quinn because if it did then I could have worked it out but um, yeah that is the only thing that I would say that's not a book issue that is a audiobook issue but unless the audiobook narrator is 
immensely terrible. I don't let it affect my enjoyment of the book. And at the moment I'm really enjoying the book. So I'm not sure whether it's going to be five stars. It's really weird because when I think about it, some parts of this, I'm just like, I'm like, yes, this could work. It's not necessarily, I would call it a magic system. So like, you've got the diviners that have a certain type of power, and then you've got like the fauns that have a, is it fauna, fawn, that have a certain type of power, and the vespers have theirs, and that there's so the different sort of races, um, we're all they're all called mortals as well, which is kind of baffling the brain because in other books these kinds of creatures wouldn't be called mortals. Mortals in other books are sort of just human with no powers. So that took a little bit of getting used to when they were calling them mortals, but there's these each god is created a set of people. So the Vespers have a god. Divinus have a god, and so on and so forth. You are supposed to pray to your god, or there's a covenant that you're supposed to adhere to. And to the city of Chime, where this book is based, these different races from these different domains have come to Chime to live. So they're supposed to live as a coherent, multiracial city. But as always, you've got your hierarchy, and the glimmers seem to be up here with the diviners. And then you get your Vespers and your, um, at the moment, all the other factions of, and races have, have the, they've gone out of my brain right now. Um, and the certain ones that are deemed like beneath everybody else that are down in like the Undercity and like the, the, the dregs of society basically. And so there is still within this city where everyone is supposed to be equal, everyone is supposed to be treated the same, there is still this hierarchical divide which it just speaks of normal society really, doesn't it? They say everyone is treated equally, but everyone knows that they're not, but nobody talks about it, other than between themselves and anyone who tries to do something about it. It's kind of ignored because the people that are up here can basically do what they want and then there's corruption and stuff. So there's like a slightly political, social, economical sort of conversation that is happening within the book which is very good but it's it's not a kind of preachy sort of way it's in a way that it's disgusting it, it kind of does make you think oh well that it's that that's kind of like real life this this could be a thing and it's very well done i think it is very very well done I said the only thing that's sort of niggling at me at the moment is the whole audiobook situation with the and because the chapters don't have names and it it, it literally this could be resolved literally by putting the name of the POV that it follows at the top of the chapter. I have my theories about how I think this might potentially go, but I don't know. One thing I will say is like I've said, they do pray to gods. So there is a kind of religious aspect to it, but it's more of like a fantastical religious aspect to it. Um, it's not sort of like, for instance, in Ilborn, it's kind of quite a, even though it is a fantasy book, it's kind of like a strict religious code with like nuns and stuff. So like some elements of that kind of mirror real life in a way which can sometimes make it feel a bit cringy at times and but that's a whole different story this is clearly just a fantasy god do you know what I mean the gods created a set of people in their image there's a covenant that says that in order for you to stay alive basically and live your life wherever you want to live in Chime, this place, that you just need to follow this covenant and one of these things is praying to me. I know that it's not going to wrap up all in this book because there is already, I think the second book is already out and it, it is part of a series so I know it's not going to all wrap up nicely in this book but we are now sort of halfway through and we are kind of getting 
hints and a little bit about who Kale really is. And although it is Quinn's job to supposed to capture her and um, set, take her to trial for killing a another person from Chime who was called a glimmer. He's investigating something with her instead and there's the become partners. I do I will also mention there is quite a bit of rep in this. There is um there are gen there are, I can't remember the, the name of the is it Embers? I can't remember which one it is. But there are a race in here um that are gender fluid or like they they are not gendered and it, there was a point in here in here where it mentioned that they don't identify as one specific gender so he actually said how would you like me to address you which I just think it's not a big deal that this is the thing um but there's also discussions about like whether you sleep with whether you sleep with men or women and then it kind of at the moment by the sounds of it um Quinn has had relationships with men in the past whether whether or not that he identifies as gays and explicitly said but also it sort of made a comment about how in the past Kale has also been with women but she is currently in love with a man so just the the different rep in this in relation to sexuality and gender and things, I'm really liking. So it's it's just a part of their everyday life. And I just think, just that, I don't know what it was about that particular thing that he said. Like, he just was like, oh, well, how would you like me to address you? Because the way that the person looked, they weren't, like, explicitly male or female looking. So and he, he didn't want to assume, and it was it was just it was just nicely done, just like slotted in there, which I really enjoyed. I don't want to just to spoil anything in this vlog, so I'm not going to say much more than that. But at the moment, it's feeling like a four star. But four star is still good. I need to stop thinking that four star is bad. Although three stars at the moment, Amazon is taken as bad. I wouldn't even take a three star as bad, but this is definitely not a three star for me at the moment. It is a four, and I like Kale. She's sassy. She's a little bit of a nippy one, and she's got a bit too like she's got a bit about her, but she's she's well aware that she needs Quinn, despite the, him being a warden and a diviner and the history of diviners and vespers and um the different lower races or lower races there's not been a great history i do like the fact that she's not put up this massive fight and caused a lot of drama and made like she's realized that in order to solve this mystery of like these deaths that have been occurring in in chime that they're trying to investigate that she is being blamed for one of them that she needs the help of Quinn, so she's she, she's helping him to help herself as well, and he's helping her. Hoping that this doesn't do oh, well, because it's been a few. Because she's in love with another person, and they are in a relationship of sorts. I think I'm hoping that there's no cheaty cheaty job in this. That would that would annoy me, um, and possibly bring it down a notch on the ratings. But we'll see. I'm I'm really excited to continue this. I want to try and finish that tonight. But as always, chatty pit, chatty pits, chatty bits of the live went on longer than expected, and it just didn't go the way I thought it was gonna go. So I didn't get as much way as possible. And I had to edit a video. So I'm gonna. Go become tired. And once again I have a 14 minute clip. How do I do this to myself? I don't know. Um Yeah. Bye. Hello friends. I'm coming in here to give you an update. I'm currently audibly reading um the thirteenth hour and it is still very good. 
things are going down. I've got no idea what the hell's going to happen in book two. Because... It's... It's just a lot. It's just a lot. I've got about an hour left of this. Which... Is great because then what I need to do is start the tethered spirits and then hopefully if I can get through that quite quickly I can try and see if I can get this edit oh, what the hell is this get this edited and uploaded Friday before I go to my friend's house I don't know I need to get a good night's sleep tonight so whilst I make my tea I will listen to listen to the rest of the 13th hour and I really want book two but that's not a spitball finalist so that won't be read in this vlog. What I will do is as soon as I finish Tethered Spirits and finish this vlog I will start the next vlog when I, whenever I pick up another book if that makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah. I'm I'm really enjoying these books so far and I don't know how anyone can read these objectively <laughs> but um, I will say that this won't be for everyone there's a lot of swearing in this book which I know some people aren't bothered about in a lot of high fantasy adult books there tends to be some swearing but some people may call the language used crude in places but for me I actually like that it's very normalised kind of chat I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever but I also like that this is very British and the characters are very British and Quinn likes tea and different types of tea and that's just such a British thing and it might not mean a lot to people but it was just it's just a it's just when you think of British a lot of people associate it with like tea and high tea and all that kind of stuff and Quinn is you just your quintessential he tries to be your quintessential highbrow British man loves his tea and he thinks that things can be resolved by just sitting and talking over a cup of tea. And I just thought that that little, that little thing in there was just great. And we're getting to the, we're getting to the nitty gritty now. And I'm stressed. <laughs> Something went down and I was like, oh God. Once again, they don't pull any punches. They're not afraid to make you feel some kind of pain. It's really good. So, I still think it's going to be a four star, which is not bad. And I need to remember in my brain that that is not a bad thing. Four stars is not bad. You see. Hello. Um, I'm going to end this vlog here because I haven't got into tethered spirits enough yet to give any kind of review on it i will just add it to my other vlog so i will be doing two more spiff blow vlogs spiff but vlogs what i am going to do though is spread the books out rather than trying to do them all in one week i think that was a bad idea but for my first spiff blow vlog we have a five star and I'm currently rated this at a four, but I'm also currently thinking of changing my mind <laughs> because I don't see any reason why I wouldn't give it a five. The vibes were great. The more that I think about this and the characters and the world and everything and the fact that it's just stuck with me the whole week, both of them have stuck with me the whole week, is kind of giving me the fact, like... I need to change it to a five because the vibes of both are just for very different reasons there's a lot of humor in this not much humor in this like but both extremely well written and like 
The magic system in, in both of these are slightly different as well. In this one it's kind of like um, hidden magic that we're still trying to work out. We don't know exactly what this magic is because there's one person that she's like, it's like a curse that she's got. And it's like, in this world, there's some people that believe that when somebody's dead, they're dead, that's it, you don't acknowledge them. You, it's kind of like a sin to remember the dead and talk about death. And then on the other hand, people um, like, like preserve them in order to bring them back that whole i've never read that in a in a book before where there's those kinds of beliefs and it, it's very interesting to work out adrian lynn and nasha the three protagonists we're currently following and all of them are badasses in their own way and i i'm rooting for all of them right now i think lynn at the moment may be my favorite I don't know, I don't know, but this is really, and then this, <sighs> just, Kale and Quinn, that's all I can say, and, and yeah, so, I think, think, both of these are probably going to be a five now, because the more I, like I said, the more I think about this, the more I just, it's very unique, and, I will say they're not going to be for everyone. Obviously, this one has a lot of profanity in it, so it's definitely definitely adult, definitely adult. Um, this one is not religion in the traditional sense. I wouldn't say, but there's like a belief system involved, and if that's not your thing, then. You're probably not going to like it, but I would, if you like epic fantasy, if you like a unique story, that in some ways it sounds like, some ways it reads like classic fantasy, then other, other ways it, it reads very different because you're not thrust into a world of magic immediately and it's, there's, like I said, there's mystery, it's kind of like a mystery fantasy because it's drip feeding you bits of information about each of the characters and it's just it's so well written and the the way the the world building and character development is just woven into the story and it shows you doesn't tell you which i hate um and you feel for everything that happens to the characters in both books so yeah i'm changing my rating on this it's five Tethered Spirits will be added to my next Biffbo vlog, which I will be deciding what to read with some polls on Twitter, I think. Or I might just do a random generator. I haven't decided yet. But the next one will be four books, and then the last one I do will be four books. So, I'm excited for that. So far, so good. Um. And we'll just see where the rest of the rest of the uh, <laughs> we'll just see where the rest of it takes us because it is a wild ride that we are on right now. If you have read these two books or any of this Biff, Biff I can't say it, I can't say it or any of this Biff or Finals books, please let me know your thoughts. If you like me and you want to see more of me, then please like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I will be doing more indie, self pubbed stuff on this channel this year, which I'm really excited for. And my shelves are changing, my tastes are changing, and my purchasing habits are changing. So you'll see more leaning towards adult and indie pubbed rather than YA, middle grade and traditionally published books that you saw last year. So if you want to come along for the ride um, and you were here but you don't have anything to say specifically, then The Black Heart is very much appreciated. Um, any recommendations that you have for books, as always, there's a Google form down below that you can complete and recommend books to me that I will be doing reviews on throughout the year. The list is growing and I'm so excited. Can yeah. someone tell me why? Every time I fall in love, it seems to be at the wrong time.